Hey everybody, welcome to another match of World of Tanks. Before this match starts, I'd just like to point out something really curious, actually. If you look at the bottom of the enemy team roster, they've got a player that's re-rolled into the new US light tank line, which is a really odd move. Usually if somebody re-rolls, they do so into a strong line of tanks. Now, light tanks, particularly that line, are quite good, they're capable, but the problem is they just tend not to win games unless you are a really, really, really good player. And so as you can see, that guy's got a decent W and 8 already. Not great, especially for a re-roll, but passable. But he's got a really bad win rate. So, <laughs> I guess the moral of this story is, if you're trying to re-roll, um, make sure you actually do so into a line of tanks you can do well in, because nobody's going to be impressed by a brand new account with good WM, but a bad win rate. Better advice, don't re-roll at all. Anyway, um, we've ended up on Windstorm. Myself and Jelly are both in our T62s. I haven't been really playing mine very much recently. I've been playing the 430 a lot more. So I decided it was time to take the T62 out for a bit. I mean, Bulldog puts himself in a really risky spot, pays for it straight away, and the enemy T69 actually rolls out into the open, trying to get shots at me. Of course, even though the T62 does have fairly weak hull armor, he's uh, still firing uphill at me at a tier 10 medium, so he's unable to get a pending shot through. I don't know what our 5100 thought he was going to achieve by coming here with us. This spot's really only useful for decently armoured mediums, sometimes fast heavies like IS-8s. Um, the AMX 5100 is a fast heavy, but not in the way that it can get to this spot and put down damage. Um, you really don't want to be bringing French tanks here unless there's a bad chat, and even then you're in trouble sometimes. So he gets blown up pretty quickly, um, and finds the Wagenträger E100 for us, actually. So we have to be really careful, we don't want to expose ourselves to that waffle. At the same time, the IS-8, oh sorry, IS-7 is starting to get brave. And being an IS-7, and being at the angle he is, he's going to be very difficult to deal with. In fact, um, at this angle, unless he rolls all the way out and exposes his idler wheel, where I'm able to put a shot through, firm a track him, and pen through his armor, I'm not going to be able to do anything. He's just too well angled at the moment. Realizing this and seeing the T69 start to push on Jelly, probably with the intent of circling around his back, I move around to try and get some shots into him. Unfortunately, I fuck up. I uh, wasn't watching the terrain and I couldn't depress my gun, so he gets a free shot into me. After a little jockeying around for position, I'm able to find a spot where I can depress my gun and myself and Jelly finish him off. I'm going to have to forgive the uh, sniffling, I've got hay fever again. Flowering plants should be banned. I thought I might get a shot on the bulldog here, but it turns out he just bailed out off the uh, little plateau he was on. There's not much chance of getting a shot on the IS-7, uh, unless I circle around the back. Which I didn't really feel like doing, especially since we had tanks there anyway. The Waffle knows what's good for him and backs away rather than trying to engage me. Pull back for a moment. I'm just trying to consider at this point what my options are. Um, but with the IS-7 about to go down, it was looking good for just pushing around here. Especially since the Waffle seemed to be retreating. So the ISU backs out, giving me a free shot at the side of his tank. Even though he is turning to face me and he does have a BL-10, um, I'm not really that worried because I'm still mostly hull down to him and although he can pen the turret on this, I have the hit points to take the hit and that happens. Um, the BL-10 is not particularly accurate and aims quite slowly and so at close range I actually do have the upper hand. So the Waffle's running to the little uh, river there, giving me a brief window of opportunity to move in on the T-62, who was distracted. 
I track him, and I'm able to circle around the back since the waffle is now around a blind corner in the river. The waffle starts moving back. Um, he's actually trying to avoid getting hit by our lover, but he could also potentially get angles on me. Thankfully, the lover takes him out, and I remain behind just enough terrain to stop him from shooting at me. I'm able to finish T62. The enemy bulldog is actually still alive, and although I know I can't catch him in the chase, uh, I decide to head up the north road anyway, back towards our own base, just to try and flush him towards our arty, which might be able to get a shotgun in, but also because the wheezy was last seen here, and that I can certainly catch up to. Bulldog's still running away. It is much faster than me, so I've got no hope of catching him unless I come across the open and spot him there. But the enemy Wheezy is actually uh, backing towards me and exposes his side briefly for a moment over the hilltop. So I'm able to get one shot in and then a finishing shot. Bulldog does indeed go for our arty, but our team's capped out by the time that he gets there. Pretty cruisy game. Um, started out a little slow, but I was able to pick up a lot of damage towards the end after my team sort of broke the enemy uh, defense. The T-62 remains the best Soviet medium at um, bouncing shit off its turret. The Object 430 and the Object 140 both have fairly thin roof armor, um, and so they can be overmatched. They also uh, tend to react badly to artillery shells hitting the tops of their turrets and the other thing with them is uh, their turret front is quite strong but there are places where it's almost flat and can be penned. The 140 has some very large hatches or uh, very large bulges around the sides and top of the turret for the commander's cupola and the um, loader's hatch. The object 430 has slightly lower profile hatch bulges but it has the rangefinder which is sitting almost flat on to whatever you're engaging. The front of the turret also has a slightly more flat um, shape at the front, not quite as much as the T64 would have if it was in the game, but it's um, it's not... It, it's kind of more like the T54 where it comes up and then slopes back, so you can't be penned through there. Uh, it's only 248mm thick if I remember correctly, which is quite a lot, but um, if you think about how how high the pen values on most tier 10 medium and heavy guns are, most of them can comfortably get through 248. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's probably going to be one of the shorter ones. It was a pretty nice, quick game. Really not a lot that needs to be covered. Um, other than just that, that middle position can be risky at times, but sometimes it just pays off like this. Um, so it tends to be where I still take my mediums on this tank. I haven't really figured out any better place to take them yet. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.